ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு எட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லெட்டல்ஸ் லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ இன் ஆர் லாஸ்ட் ஃபியூ வீடியோஸ் வி ஆர் சீங் அபவுட் ஹவு டு ரெக்கார்ட் அ பேசிக் கே சிக்ஸ் பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் டெஸ்டிங் அண்ட் வி ஆல்சோ சா அபவுட் தி சைன் இன் யூசிங் கே சிக்ஸ் ஜாவா ஸ்கிரிப்ட் ஸோ டுடே இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி அபவுட் அ கம்ப்ளீட் செட் ஆஃப் ஃபோர் எக்ஸாம்பிள்ஸ் where i will take you through each and every phase of how to use the parameterization because parameterization is a concept or is a process of turning the test values into reusable parameters for example through variables and shared arrays and that actually saves a lot of time and it actually saves a lot of process to improve so in this video i will give you example of test scripts of how to use the parameterization so first before we move on so i have a set of transactions or pages where i will go to the landing page so here this is the landing page of this application and after that i will navigate to these four different pages and in this script i have added 10 virtual users so here i have added 10 virtual users and the duration of this test will be 30 seconds and i am also giving or i'm declaring the transaction so that we can see the transactions the response times of each individual transactions and the end i'm testing the status of each request and if it is 200 it's passed and i'm also adding a 5 second of pacing at the end of each test and a think time of 5 seconds between each transactions so now so this i script i have saved as param underscore 00 and now let me execute this script for you so let me clear this and now let me run the first test which is k6 run dot param 00 dot js so this test as i have told you already so this will show you or this will take you through each and every page so first in this scenario i'm setting the page number 1 and since the duration is going to be a 30 seconds so i will visit the maximum number of pages which i can accommodate in inside the 30 seconds of this test and also there is again a graceful stop of 30 seconds so totally this test will run for a minute and by the time we will see how many pages it executes and also as i have told you here i have i wanted to show you the response times of each transaction so here you can see for the page 1 the response times are here and for the page 2 the response times are given here and for the page 3 the response times are given here so finally the test has completed and the checks are 100% and you can see the iterations which I have executed the total users and the minimum and maximum response times and every matrix which we wanted to get to the k6 testing so now we will move on to the next step so in the next example so here instead of having these as four different steps i'm going to parameterize it so how did i do that so here i'm declaring the base url as the constant base url and after that all the other pages will just be declared in the category id and all these category ids i have given it here so the fish dogs reptiles and cats so all these values will be here so i don't want to just confuse you with 10 users i'm just changing it to just one user and the one user will execute for 30 seconds and i have not added any of the think time or pacing so we'll just go straight and we'll run this test so this is going to be the param underscore zero one let's go to the partial and let me run the parameters go one and here starts the test so since it's let me just minimize this to see so here you can see the test is started with one user and since there's no think time or pacing i'm just keeping on bombarding the requests please service and here we can see we are almost reaching the 30 second mark which is the estimated duration once the test is completed and here you can see we have got one user and we have achieved 224 iterations and the status is 200 and we have got 100% checks and everything is fine 
So now, so we have completed our second example. So in this second example, I will just recall you. I have given the values inside the code as a constant R. I am just giving them in the array. So every time this particular script will pick the value. So that's the reason I am using a for loop. So every time there will be different values that will be picked from this constant category code and it will be executed. So this is again a basic form of using parameterization. So now we will move on to the next level which is so here so here this third example I have not made any major changes apart from bringing in the thing time and pacing and also I will show you the response times of each individual transactions okay so let's now move on to the third example and for that let me execute the param underscore zero two and this will take you to the test and here you can see we have got just one user and the very first transaction has got 137 milliseconds as the response time so the source is console since we are running it through the CLI or the partial and since I have added enough amount of think time and pacing in fact I would recommend you to do that as a best practice so that will not or that will help you to achieve the required number of hits instead of hitting the servers with unnecessary workload so it's always a good practice again I would say to keep the throughput under control that will save the system and also you can achieve the required amount of hits throughout the test and during the execution so let's wait for the test to complete because we have added enough amount of think time and pacing so now here the test has completed and the transaction one took more than seven seconds and the transaction two took 32 milliseconds and that's how the example where we have used or we have parameterized it's a very basic parameterization so we have parameterized the values from inside the script so now it's the next move which is we are using the shared array so this shared array will help you to use the csv file so two things has to be done one is we have to make changes to the script where we have to connect to the CSV file and the second thing is we have to create a CSV file so here I have created a CSV file with the category code as the header of this variables with the four values the fish dogs reptiles and cats and we are going to pull the values here so it's again the same thing as the URL so the only thing that we are changing here is we are doing this with a shared array or we are using the shared array to pull the value so what is shared array so in k6 each virtual user is like a separate computer running its own set of instructions and imagine if each virtual user has to carry its own copy of a large data file that would take up a lot of memory so the K6 has come up with a solution which is the shared array so to avoid this issue of carrying large data file K6 introduced a technique called shared array and it's like a common notebook that all virtual users can read from and write to so some technical details about the shared array is while well, shared array is convenient it does come with a small cost so accessing data in it is like a tiny bit more time compared to using a regular array but so regular array i mean the array that we have here so it takes a little bit more time than accessing this from the csv file but this small delay does not really matter much when we consider how long it takes to make network requests and the next thing is it avoids the memory problem so if our data files are very large and we don't use shared array it might use 
too much memory. So in such cases, K6 might not be able to run our script at all, or it might stop in the middle because it's running out of memory. And then the garbage collection. So K6 has something called a garbage collection. It's like a cleanup crew that looks through all the stuff a virtual user used and decides what to throw away. So with big arrays, it takes more time for the cleanup crew to finish its work. And finally, in simple terms, using sh shared array is like sharing a common notebook among all visual users. And it's a smart way to make your script does not use too much memory and does not get bogged down by cleaning up after itself. So the slight delay in accessing data is a small price to pay for the benefits it provides. So now let's move on to the last and final script, which is using the shared array where we're going to pick the value from the CSV file. So let me go to the partial and let me run the third file. And here you can see the test has been started with 10 different visual users. The test is running fine. So first here you can see the transaction category for fish has took these much amount of response times and then the transaction category for dogs took less amount of time and then for reptiles again it took less amount of time so each user i mean the other 10 users are accessing the pages one another what i mean like one after the other pages so now we are almost towards the end of the test so here you can already see the response times so the test has been completed and that's how we have to use the parameters. So I will just take, give you a quick overlook. So initially we have not used parameterization and we were doing the regular hard code of data. And then I have used the parameterization inside the arrays. So this comes inside the arrays inside the file, which is possible for less amount of data. In fact, you can do it for, more, for less amount of data, which is less than 10. But when it goes more than 10 or more than 100, it's always a good option to use the shared array option of using the CSV files. And in fact, even if it goes beyond, K6 has clearly told you that it's not possible to do because of the memory error. But in fact, if you have a huge amount of memory, it's always you're always welcome to do it. So this is how the memory or the parameterization part works with the K6. So until I meet you in another interesting video, it's bye bye from Asan Shanmugam and Little's Law.